Good morning. Welcome to Victory. We are so excited you're here to worship with us today. You guys awake, ready to go today? All right. All right. Welcome to our online viewing audience as well. We are excited to worship with you on this Palm Sunday. As we get started, want to go ahead and, and, and uh, begin with a few announcements about things going on in the church. Uh, first thing is, is we always want to say we love to stay connected with you one way or the other. Um, in person um, and digitally and via phone and via social media. So stay, follow us on social media at Victory Anaheim at da Atlanto David and also sign up for our weekly newsletter at info at victoryanaheim.org. Uh, if you're, if you, uh, we like to keep folks connected with what's going on. So the newsletter is to know what's happening in the church. And then um, we're not talking about everything going on, but here's a few highlights right now or a couple of highlights. First thing is this Wednesday, 6.30 p.m., we're having an in-person meeting. It's called Team Night. Team Night is for everyone who volunteers at Victory. If you're a volunteer at Victory in any way, shape, or form, we ask you to come to Team Night. These will be meetings. We're starting up our Team Nights, uh, and, and so this, this Wednesday is Team Night. Again, if you volunteer doing anything at Victory, Team Night is where we ask you to come. This is a once a month meeting, and it'll be at our church office, and it's this Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. And this is also, if you're, if you're new to the church and you want to get involved, you want to find a way to serve, this is where you get started. Show up at team night. We'll help you get plugged in. Also, Easter is coming up. And so we've, we've got, uh, today is Palm Sunday. Next Saturday, uh, we are doing an uh, Easter fun drive through at 10.30 a.m., that will be on the campus of Anaheim First Christian Church, 10.30 a.m. It will be a one-hour drive through We invite you to bring the kids, invite your neighbors, be able to drive through. The Easter Bunny will be there. You'll get treats. And we just welcome you to, to, uh, to be part of that fun time, 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. next Saturday morning. We are accepting Easter candy donations for the drive through event. You can drop those off at the church office. If you don't know where the church office is, shoot us an email, email to info at Victory Anaheim, and we'll, we'll get you the address. It's on the campus of uh, Anaheim First Christian Church. Sunrise Prayer Service at 227 North Magnolia, next Sunday morning, 6.45 a.m. It will be a prayer gathering on Easter morning. The few, the proud, those who can get up early, some people are not aware that 6.45 comes around twice in a day, but it really does. And some of us will be there to pray at that time, the first time uh, that it comes around on Easter morning. That will be in the dirt on our campus uh, where we're preparing to break ground to build our new building. And, uh, and then our worship service, 10.30 a.m. next Easter or next Sunday morning on Easter, right here at Maxwell School and, of course, online as well. Be blessed. Stand to your feet. Let's worship the Lord.
your name The ocean's roar and tumble At your name Angels will bow The earth will rejoice Your people cry out Lord of all the earth We shout your name Shout your name Filling up the sky
attention for a few moments just to, to think about the meaning of this day, Palm Sunday. Sorry, I was thinking I had one of those things on my head. Uh, so Palm Sunday, the meaning of Palm Sunday, uh, it's a special day for, for God's people. And when I think about Jesus and, and, and what he went through that week, this sets off the Holy Week, Palm Sunday. It sets off this week this important time in the history of Christianity where, where it's, it's the highlight of it all and becomes the, the, the hinge of human history, the, the resurrection of Jesus. And this week was, was, in some ways it never made sense to me that we start off the Holy Week with Palm Sunday, which is about triumph and celebration, and receiving Jesus, and, and, and being exuberant over his presence, and him riding into Jerusalem as the hero, the king of all Israel. And then by Friday, we have Good Friday, which never made sense why we call it Good Friday, because it's such a dark day. It, 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 was, a, it was a downer of a day for, for all followers of Jesus. And, and, and so uh, Palm Sunday is the celebration before the darkest day. And then Sunday was coming when, when the true celebration could take place. And, and the world has been celebrating ever since then that Jesus arose. Amen. And so the week was filled with emotions, ups and downs. But I want to read to you this portion of scripture from the book of John chapter 12. Uh, where, where we, we read about Jesus' triumphal entry. So the next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. Verse 14, And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. 
The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, you see that they are gaining nothing, that we are gaining nothing. The, look, the world has gone after him. The Pharisees were threatened by the by the, the influence of Jesus, by people celebrating Jesus, by, the, by all of Jerusalem celebrating him as king. He was a threat to that establishment. And, and yet when Jesus, when Jesus came, he didn't come to take power from them. He came to bring power to all people. He came to bring life to all people. And it, it says that his disciples didn't fully understand these things that had happened while they were in the moment, but they came to understand in the days and weeks and months to come. Palm Sunday is the day we recognize when Jesus set off the Holy Week, when Jesus came and, 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 and the crowd celebrated him with, with joy. And uh, in honor of that, in just a moment, after we receive the offering, the kids are gonna come and, and sing a song of celebration and we want to invite you all to, to, to give your attention to the children as they prepare to come. And, and I just want to draw a moment for our offering that um, our offering uh, is, is one of the ways that we give back to God. We give back to God because that's how ministry happens, through giving. And we pray that, that, that you would be involved in our church through giving. You can do it a couple of different ways through our uh, our live we have the offering box back here but through our website at victoryanheim.org slash donate you can you can use our secure platform and we invite you to give and uh, find the joy of giving children will you come forward right now at this time and i invite you all to give your full attention to our children as they sing and clap with them and welcome them all right kids come on in
Hello, everyone. I'm glad you're here. Wow, full house. That's great. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so let's pray. Father, we do thank you for your mercy, for your grace. Thank you for the children that just sang. What an incredible uh, group of young people. Pray you bless them, bless their families. Uh, bless our time now together as we look into your word and learn more about you and about what you have for us. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. John chapter 8. It's a long chapter. It's like a 59 verses in John chapter 8. Uh, but that's where we are in this, uh, on this Sunday. We're going to be looking at a passage in John chapter 8. You know, actually, John chapter 8 is broken up into several discourses that Jesus had with uh, the Jews that were there. He went into the, he went into the temple, and uh, as it was customary in those days, he would go in, uh, people would go in and teach, you know, in groups, and they would uh, encourage one another. They would, uh, a lot like what we do now with church. You know, you come in and, and you gather in large groups and you, and you uh, share, and uh, it wasn't un unusual for someone to get up and start teaching. And that's what Jesus did. He went in and started teaching. But they knew who he was, and they didn't like him because he'd been doing this for a while. And the Jews were like, oh, that Jesus again. Uh, so the first part of that uh, chapter, uh, they, they haul in this woman who's been caught in the very act of adultery, and they accuse her. And then Jesus goes through, and you know, you probably know the story where he uh, says, you know, who of you that hadn't sinned cast the first stone? And he starts to write in the, in the sand there, and, and they're like, all, they all, all feel guilty because they know that they're sinners, right? And they start leaving, and pretty soon it's just the woman and Jesus there, and he says, you know, go and sin no more. So we know that story, and then it continues on. He goes to another group, I guess, and he starts to teach there, and, or maybe they all went over there, and so he kind of walked over there and started teaching them again. And then they're probably pretty perturbed, right? Um, and he starts teaching them, and he, and he goes through, and he talks about how he's the light of the world. You know, and they're hearing all this, and they've heard it before. You know, he's been teaching for a while, and they don't like him, right? Uh, and he knows that they want to kill him. Uh, and then later, he starts talking again, and he, in his third discourse, you know, he says, I'm not of this world. And they're starting to catch on, like, okay, well, maybe he's like, you know, he's gone crazy. Uh, in the fourth discourse, he, he talks ba mainly to them, and he says how they, if they, if they just believe the truth, the truth will set them free. You know, and then pe there were people that started believing. It says on, in that uh, section there, it says that there were people that started believing. They started believing in Jesus, right? And then the last part of the chapter, in chapter eight, uh, he he goes in, and uh, he's starting talking, and he mentions Abraham. So if you look at verse. Uh, 37, I think it's verse 37. Uh, I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Okay? Um, I just want to preface this is, in life, be careful with hero worship. I just want to lay that out because we're going to talk about a hero today. Okay? And how these Jews, they had a hero. All right? When he said, your father, he was basically talking about the devil because he knew that their father was the devil. Right? Right? They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. See, they had hero worship, right? Jesus said unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me. A man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Abraham wasn't out to kill Jesus. Abraham was the one who laid the foundation of their very faith. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then they say to him, 
uh, we be not born of fornication. And that might be a jab, you know, because they knew the rumor that Jesus wasn't, uh, you know, that he was kind of like illegitimate sort of from a, uh, a human uh, perspective. Of course, we know that he was conceived of the Holy Spirit, that God came down and Mary had a child, not of man, but of God. We know that, but they still probably held to this belief that Jesus, ah, he's just some illegitimate guy, right? But he was drawing quite a crowd at the time, and they hated him. Uh, we have but one father, even God, the, the Pharisees said. Jesus said to him, if God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. And he's going on with this uh, heated discussion. I mean, this is going back and forth. And the Pharisees are really getting upset, right? Uh, <clears throat> Verse 43, why do you not understand my speech, Jesus says? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye of ye are of your father the devil. Ooh. He just called them devil worshippers. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you believe me not? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore heareth them not, because ye are not of God. Let me tell you, these Pharisees knew the scriptures. They were not stupid. They were not dumb about it. They were not ignorant. They knew the scriptures. They knew every one of the prophecies. If anyone were to see Jesus as the Messiah, as the true Son of God, they should have. But something blinded them. Then, verse 48, Then answered the Jews and said unto, unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. So he's teaching this, and they're like, what? Right? Then the Jews said unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham, like their hero, right, is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Thou art, art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Who makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say, I know him not, I shall be a liar like you. But I know him, and keep his saying. Your father Abraham, Jesus said, Jesus said in verse 56, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and, and he saw it, and was glad. You see what Jesus just said? He said to the Jews, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Now that's the truth. They are like accusing Jesus of being a devil and someone that's nuts, that's out of, that shouldn't be there, right? A heretic. And he is saying about their hero that he rejoiced to see Jesus' day. And he saw it and was glad. It's like, wait a minute. Now, Abraham's long gone. How can he see Jesus' day? And how can, how can Abraham be glad that Jesus has arrived and has been uh, born? How could, I mean, Abraham's been gone for a long time, right? I mean, 
hundreds of years now, more than that. I mean, talk, it's, I don't know, it's probably, it was at least 2,000 years, maybe, maybe somewhere between 2,000 and 2,400 years where Abraham lived. I mean, it was a long time ago. He's dead. How can Abraham be glad? And the Jews said unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old, and th hast thou seen Abraham? Wait a minute. How, you, it's like you're talking like you know him, like, like he's your friend. Like you he, like he hang out with him yesterday. See, you're, you're just 50 years old. How, you haven't seen Abraham. And what did he say? Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. He got out of there quick. Right? There were people out to kill him. Now, when he said, before Abraham was, I am, this is because years earlier, Moses' time frame, this is, so Moses was about 1,400 years earlier. When he, when he brought the Ten Commandments down to the children of Abraham, or to the children of Israel, uh, Moses went, you know the story of the Ten Commandments, right? So Moses comes down with the Ten Commandments, but before he comes down, he, he asks God, who gave him the Ten Commandments, he, he said, who, who shall I say that sent me? And God uh, said uh, to Moses, he says, tell them, I am hath sent me unto you. So the, the name I am refers to God. So what was Jesus actually saying? He was saying he was God. He was saying that he was the almighty God. And this is what prompted the Jews to take up stones and kill him. So I wanna, I, I, I'm trying to figure out, okay now, so I put myself in the shoes of these, these uh, Jews, these, prophets, these, these Pharisees, and I want to see why they hated Jesus so much. They wanted to kill him. Well, first we've got to look at Abraham, right? Abraham, a saint. Old Testament saint. Old Testament believer. The father of our faith. You know, that's why we sing the song. Father Abraham had many sons. Yeah. Because it was Abraham that was called out first. And from Abraham came the whole line of uh, the Israelites and, the, and from them came Jesus. Right? And the faith and the belief and the prophecies and all the stuff that, that uh, was that the Jews espoused, that the Jews loved so much started with Father Abraham. Well, and uh, and in John chapter 8, verse 56, and Jesus said, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and saw it and was glad. I see three things here. Uh, Jesus knew Abraham like he was a friend. Jesus still had contact with Abraham. Abraham was revered. Father Abraham, right? He was the hero of the Jews. So there's a lot of significance placed on the life of Abraham. You know, God, it was God's plan to bless and redeem the world through a chosen people. The Jews were chosen. They were chosen to be the bearers of truth so that the world would know. But what did the Jews do? They kind of kept it to themselves. And on top of the laws of God, they piled all their own laws. And they thought that if they just followed all these laws, that they would stand before God redeemed. That was what they were doing. They weren't missionaries by any means. They weren't the ones going to all corners of the world when they should have maybe. If they're the bearers of God's truth, shouldn't they have won the world over in the time that they had? But they got very technical in all their laws that they built up. Genesis 13.3 says, I will bless them that bless thee and curse 
him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. That was the, that was the uh, message to Abraham. And when God said, and all thee the families of the earth shall be blessed, he had in mind, he had in mind Christ, the coming of Christ. The seed of Abraham concerning the faith that we need to have. Galatians 3. Uh, so of Abraham came the Jews, and through the Jews came the law and the prophets, and through them and after them came Christ and his church. And Jesus said of the Jews of his day, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see me and was glad, uh, and, he was, and he saw it and was glad. Abraham understood that he was the, uh, Abraham understood that he was sort of the starting point, the starting point of this faith, this long blessing the world. The, uh, from him would come the Messiah, the ultimate blessing. He knew that, right? He was the father of a great multitude of believers. I believe that Abraham knew that the land that he lived in, Canaan, uh, was only a type or a figure of the heavenly land, the true Canaan, where he and his innumerable family, not just those that were born of his seed, but those that were also of faith. You see, when we, you and I call, you know, sing Father Abraham or, or talk about Abraham being the father of our faith, he may not be a father in a sense of an actual uh, ancestor, Right, like the Jews, they're all born under uh, that line, physically. We are born again by faith, and so the father of our faith, Abraham. And Abraham knew that. Uh, Galatians chapter three twenty nine. And if you be Christ's, then ye are Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise, right? By faith, you've come into that family, that tribe, that blessing. The great life of Abraham occupies more space in the Old Testament record than any other uh, person, personal narrative. Abraham was a great man of God. And you know, it, it, it would do us a lot of good if we studied Abraham and learned from him all the things that he did. First, he had great faith. Well, what is faith? Well, in Hebrews chapter 11, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Therefore, faith is the ability to see the unseen. Can you see God? No, but you know he's there, right? So that's faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, temporary, right? But the things which are not seen are eternal. And faith allows us to do, do this. Uh, faith is based on evidence or testimony. So when you believe something, it's because of someone else's faith or testimony or what you have seen is evidence of what is unseen, right? So uh, in Hebrews, when it says that faith is a substance of things not seen, the evidence, the evidence of things unseen, right? That means your faith, when you have faith and you're exercising your faith and other people see that, they can see what you do, right? And that is what gives them faith. They say, well, you know what? Look at those Christians. They're really living what they believe. They're really, they're not just a bunch of you know, words. They're the words, but they're also the actions, right? When you're the words and the actions, people take you a little more seriously, don't you think? And your faith, is born out in your actions, and then those are seen by others, and then they have faith. They start believing. Faith is not a blind leap in the dark. You don't just say, okay, believe this, right? I used to tell my students, you know, 
Uh, if I told you that in uh, 10 seconds, uh, there would be a great earthquake right now, in 10 seconds, and I'd wait 10 seconds. They're all sitting there. I go, see, none of you believe me, because had you believed me, what would you have done? Well, we would have left the room, <laughs> you know, duck and cover. We would, have been, we would have been out of here. You know, 10 seconds is more than enough time to be to get out of the building, right? Exactly. You don't believe everything you hear, do you? Because you always take it with what is real in your life. But if you said, if I said, yeah, there's going to be an earthquake in 10 seconds, do you believe me? And they're all saying, yeah, yeah, I really believe you. I honestly do believe you. But they still sat there. What would you say about their belief? <laughs> it wasn't real belief. It was just fake belief, right? So you as a Christian, if you're out there in the world, right, and you're saying, oh, I believe in Jesus, and then you're living like you don't, what does that say about your faith? Abraham was justified by works. He did a lot of things. You know, we could look at all the things that Abraham did. You know, think about uh, Sarah and, uh, and his wife, uh, Abraham's wife, Sarah, 90 years old. Abraham was 100. And what did God say? Hey, you two, you're going to be the father of many nations. Uh, you're going to have a son. Sarah's like, ha, huh, that's funny. That can't happen, right? But Abraham believed. You know what? They did have a son. His name was Isaac. Of course, Sarah didn't believe at first until she actually had the son. <laughs> but she didn't believe at first, and so she brings in this young handmaid, right? And, of course, uh, Abraham's like, all right, <laughs> whatever, you know, like, I don't know why he would uh, go along with it, but he did, and, and uh, she had a son too, uh, Ishmael, and so that he actually had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. Well, Ishmael wasn't the one that God was talking about. He was not the one of faith at all. Isaac was, and from Isaac came the Israelites. Isaac had, uh, you know, Jacob. And, you know, the whole line goes down. Uh, and then the 12 tribes, 12 uh, children of Israel. Jacob was renamed to Israel. And then he had 12 children and so forth and so on. And then we had the Jews, the whole, family, the whole line of the Jews. So Abraham's faith stood the test. You know, how could our faith stand the test? Are we just like social media, like crowd followers? You know, do we like... Well, I guess this is the, this is like everyone's like talking about this. I guess this is important. I don't think I'm going to talk about that anymore. I'm going to talk about this. You just follow along with the crowd. Kind of like the people uh, that were there uh, crying Hosanna on Palm Sunday. They were Jews. They knew the prophecy. They knew in Zechariah 9, verse 9, how that it prophesied that Jesus would come or that the Messiah would come riding in on a donkey. And they knew that, and here he comes riding in on a donkey with a hosanna, and they're putting the palm leaves down, right? Because that was the thing to do. Everyone believed it. But it wasn't a week, it wasn't, it was this Friday, the next Friday after that. The same voices that were crying hosanna were yelling crucify him. So Abraham, justified by work. You know, you can't, you can't say, you know, just believe in Jesus. That's called easy believism in, in the Christian realm. Easy believism. Just believe in Jesus. You know? It's like a deathbed conversion. You know, I do believe in deathbed conversions, and I believe that some of them are real. But if a person is living his entire life denying Christ and living selfishly after hearing time and time again the gospel, and then he shuns it, all his life, and then now he's dying, and he's scared, and he's gonna, he knows he's going to die. I don't know how sincere his, his cry is for, you know, God's a judge. I do believe that faith in God, at least from a human perspective, is measured in what we do. You see, if you have faith, and if that faith is genuine, 
it will move you to works, to do things. It's not saying that the works are what justify you. But they do go hand in hand. Amen. Paul was very clear how that faith alone, because nothing we can do could ever merit going to heaven. We are already sinners. Yes. Yes. We are already sinners. Mm -hmm. We are the gift of God is eternal life. The belief that salvation comes by faith alone, erroneous on its surface. It's called easy believism. James 2, 24 says, You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. So James was the practical. Paul was sort of like the technical and saying, It's just faith alone. God looks at your faith. He doesn't look at what you did. James says, well... Faith without works is dead. A man is justified by works and faith. They, they come together, right? You know, together, like pen, pineapple, apple pen. Not, not everyone gets that probably. Yeah. YouTube, I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> Abraham was a friend of God. And we can do a lot. See, Abraham was a friend. The scriptures were fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God and is imputed unto him for righteousness. He, he was called a friend of God. You know, three, many times, three times in scripture he's called a friend of God. Here in James 2, 23, in Isaiah 4, uh, 41, 8, and 2 Chronicles 27, he's called a friend of God. To be a friend, one must do his will. I'm, I'm going over a little bit, but I'm going to try to rush to get through the most important part of this lesson. No one wants to be an enemy of God, right? Whoever is a friend of the world is the enemy of God, James 4.4, 4. Hebrews 10.31, it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. You don't want to be God's enemy. You want to be God's friend. Learn from Abraham. Abraham was God's friend. And there's many other things we can learn from Abraham. Uh, how he taught his children uh, in the ways. You know, made sure that they, they followed God's ways. Deuteronomy 11:18. Therefore shall you lay up these my words in your heart, and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. He says, you know what? Take the scriptures. By that, at that time, they didn't have many scriptures. They, probably, they had the Ten Commandments, and they had a few other things. They didn't have the Bible back in Abraham today, you know, because the Bible was still being written, right? I mean, they didn't even, it wasn't even the Bible. They had the scriptures, and they had uh, the Ten Commandments, and they had these things. And you know what he said? Take these commandments. Write them down and put them as frontlets. They had these little headdresses that they wore, and, you know, the little things that hang down. And he says, it's like putting like billboards in front of your face. Walk around and always be, so you can always look at God's word and know what God wants. Keep it before thee. Basically what he was saying, whether figuratively or literally. Of course, the Jews took it literally, and they would take little tiny scriptures and roll it up, and they would actually put these things, and then hang them down from their, from their hat. I don't think that Abraham meant that, right? He was talking about putting the scriptures in front of you so you don't forget them. You know, put them on your doorposts, put them on your walls, put them, you know what? Scripture should always be there in front of you so you know what God's word is. Abraham was generous uh, when he argued with Lot. You know, he actually gave him half of his land so that Lot could, could have his own, uh, own land, right? For the sake of peace, he gave up half of his, his possessions. Uh, Abraham, as a good example to us, he refused to get entangled with the affairs of the world. Uh, he, did, he just wanted, uh, he didn't want, you know, he negotiated with, with God a lot of times, and he didn't want 
uh, anything for himself. He just wanted uh, he just wanted Lot to be safe. He wanted his family to be safe. He wanted to prosper. He wanted God to be magnified. Uh, he didn't uh, side with uh, the enemy in order to get his ways. Abraham was a hero of the Jews. And here Jesus is saying, before Abraham was, I am. What did those Pharisees miss? Well, they had hero worship. They were so blinded by the fact that he was saying that he was greater than Abraham. Jesus is emphasizing that he is the one that they've been waiting for. But they were so fixed on their religion that they missed it. To them, nothing was higher than Abraham, their father. They missed the very message that they lived for. The very message that Abraham had passed down to them. The message of faith in God. And with all the prophecies in the scriptures of the Messiah, the sent one, those very message bearers missed it. It's truly sad. And it was that hatred for Jesus that blinded them. They wanted to kill him. Here he was, the Messiah. You know, some believed, the Bible says some believed, we know even some Pharisees ended up believing. Nicodemus. But get this straight. Jesus is the promised one. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Before him, there is no one. And after him, there will be nobody. Beloved, I call you beloved because I love you. Nothing can be compared to him, for he is comparable to nothing in this world and the whole universe. He is almighty, and none can contend with him. He is the creator, and he is not the creation. <laughs> Beloved, your problem, before your problems, he is God. He's one you can call on. Before your failures, he is God. Yeah. Before your faults, he is God. Yeah. Never underestimate Jesus. Or think lowly of him. Why? For he is God. Amen. Beloved, don't fear anything. Don't be scared of anything. Be scared for nothing. Why? Because you serve Jesus. Who is before all that. Before all that scares you. Or puts fear into you. And beloved, let me tell you one more thing. Fear not. Go into the world. Preach Jesus. Preach him. Preach him to the nations. And make them know that it's all about Jesus. And no one else. If Abraham were here, if Abraham were there, standing amidst those, what would he say? He'd be the first to follow Jesus. For Jesus is God, and he's sovereign over all, because he is the great I am. Father, I pray, please empower me to declare Jesus to the world and bring the world to you. In your mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Parsons, for that message. Um, if you, if any point during this song you want to stand, uh, please rise. Uh, but if you feel comfortable in your seat worshiping, that's okay too.
tear down the walls I built up, every wall I built up, every wall I built up. Cause you deserve every piece in my heart, every piece in my heart, every piece in my heart. Lord, I am trusting that you are faithful. you come and break through to me over and over and over again i am bringing my heart to you with open hands closer and closer you're drawing me in as a dance of my heart lay before you again lord i trust Thank you for that worship team. It's been a good service. It's been good to be together in God's name. Thank you, Jim, for that, for that message. I am. Before Abraham was, I am. May we remember who Jesus is. May we live out Palm Sunday this week. I want to call on you as God's people to prepare yourself to celebrate Easter one week from today. To celebrate Easter, tap into the week that Jesus had. Tap into the week that Jesus had, that Jesus lived when Jesus created history, 2000, nearly 2,000 years ago. And as you prepare to celebrate Easter, take on the sorrow of Good Friday. Take on the suffering of Good Friday. Take on the pain of Good Friday. Just get a glimpse into it. 
so that you can adequately celebrate Easter on Resurrection Day. On Resurrection Day. God's people be blessed this week. If, if maybe someone put their faith in Jesus as, Jesus, as Jim talked about Jesus as God, before Abraham was, Jesus said, I am. And uh, if you put your faith in the great I am, let us know so we can journey with you by uh, putting some resources in your hand. Christianity is never a solo thing. It's always a team thing. It's always a thing you do in community. And you need other, to surround yourself with other people of God who you aspire to be like, who you aspire to have faith like, who you aspire to know the word like them and follow Jesus like they do. So I want to encourage you to, to uh, take that steps, those steps of faith by uh, letting us know that you put your faith in Jesus so we can help you out and put some resources in your hand and help you follow Jesus. As you go out this week, live with the celebration that Jesus is the I am, that Jesus paid the price, and, and even Friday. Um, you sp pay special attention to our social media this week. We'll kind of guide you through the week uh, on our social media through each day of the week that Jesus lived. And we'll give you some cues about that, some scriptures you can read. We'll send that out through our social media this week. So be blessed in the name of Jesus. Take God's goodness with you wherever you go. Live the life. Don't just live Christianity on Sunday. Live it every day because Christ is in you. Christ is with you. Christ abides in you. So live with Jesus. And join us once more as we sing. Shine your name, filling up the skies with endless praise.